I'm dating myself. I know. <laughs> it had to be. It had to be in the uh, late '80s because I was still um, at Juilliard at the time. <laughs> Everyone, I want to introduce you to Lawrence Gilliard Jr. I don't know that he needs an introduction because I know many of you came here to uh, talk to Larry tonight. Florence tonight. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I call him Larry. Florence. He knew me when I was Larry. But then one day I woke up and I had teenage children. And I said, damn it, I'm a grown up. And so then I became Lawrence. <laughs> Did you ever go into the industry under the other name? Under Lawrence? Larry. So yeah, when I first started, well, no, 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 no. In the beginning, I first tried Lawrence. You know, I'm a junior. So yeah. first I tried Lawrence. I was like, that's too formal. I go with my grandmother. And then once I did a play, I tried Lawrence Gilliard the second. And that was just awful. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just was like, I'm just Larry. I'm just going to be Larry. So that was that until I woke up with teenage children. And then I've been Lawrence for the past couple of years now. So. There's something about being in your early uh, 20s, and when you go into the business, you want to get that name right. Oh, yeah, Sometimes yeah. Sometimes you have to do yeah. a little trial and error, but try to decide early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, you know, get it set like that. I think, like, like you were just saying, on IMDb, you see a, there's a lot of Larry on there, because, you know, all the early stuff is Larry, because they say it, right? As Larry, Larry, Larry as Larry, as Larry, yes, as, yes, and then yes. it switches later on to as Lawrence, as Lawrence, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I want to thank you for coming tonight to talk to me. We have uh, the audience members, many of them are students, friends. Uh, where are our actors who perform tonight? Here in the front? Okay, you're all way. Okay. Um, Yo, let me just say congratulations to you guys. You guys rock. I saw a lot of amazing, amazing moments. You guys have, uh, you have some, uh, I saw a lot of power, man. You guys have a powerful squad, man. So, congratulations. Congratulations to all you guys. You guys did a great job. And congratulations for making it through, because, you know, I know it ain't easy. I've been there. I've been there. I don't know how many of y'all dropped out, but, but I've been there. <laughs> well, Lawrence knows it's a, it's, it's a struggle. It's hard to be an actor, and it's a, life, uh, it's a lifetime of struggle. Forever. Okay, so we're going to talk about that tonight. There were a couple of things I sent to you. Um, we did a Q&A last night, and I don't like the Q&As to become about headshots and the business, oh. but just more about what it's like, really, that kind of intimacy with yourself yeah. and the problems that you go through. Yeah. in doing it. So the first one was I asked you about the word uncertainty. Yeah. You know, to talk about uncertainty, you know, your fear, your self-doubt, <clears> how <throat> did you deal with that, those feelings? How do you still deal with them? Do you still have them? I would imagine. I'm not sure. Absolutely. No. So it doesn't go away. So early in, in class, uh, early when we started doing scenes, James said once in class, he said, you know, if you're not afraid, and you're not human, and that is the truth. You're always going to be nervous. You're always going to be afraid. It's not about being nervous or afraid. It's what you do with that energy. Mm. Once the curtain parts, or once they say action, you've got all this energy inside, you know, that nervous energy, and it's about what you do with it. Mm. So, yeah, I'm absolutely, every new movie, every new TV show, every new play, every new thing I do, I'm always nervous about getting it right. And I'm reading it. I'm looking at it. I know I can do it. Right, because you know I've learned the technique, and I have I know how to do the work to get to where I need to go. But you're always uh, there's always that fear. You don't want to suck. You never want to suck. You know, um, and actually that's what saves us as actors. It saves us the fact that we don't want to suck. That's what gets us through a lot of times. You know, a lot of times, because we don't always want to go to work. James used to say back in the day, he'd be like, he'd say, actors are lazy. They don't want to do the work. And I, so I came from, I got to say, I came from the classical music world. I studied classical music at Juilliard before I started acting. It's very strenuous program, you know, from when you're a kid and you're constantly blah, 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 doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. That's what I came from, you know, <clears throat> um, working hard, working hard, working hard. When I started acting, 
it's a whole different kind of work, you know. Um, I, I'm not, a, I'm not big on reading, <laughs> right? But I want to be a good actor, so I have to read. Which means, and, and you know, as an actor, you have to research. That's reading. You got to do all these things that I didn't necessarily want to do or like to do, but I don't want to suck, <laughs> so I got to do the work. You know what I mean? Um, and so. What was your question? Well, we're talking about uncertainty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uncertainty. So all those things. So all those things. You know, that motivates you. That all motivates me. But yeah, I mean, all when you when you're doing the work, that's how I deal with my uncertainty, by doing the work, and trusting the work. Trusting the the preparation, I should say. Doing all the preparation and trusting the preparation, and trying to trying my best to make sure I, you know, research as much as I need to and cross all my T's and dot all my I's so that when the curtain parts or when they say action or whatever, I'm as prepared as I can be. I don't always, I don't always do the work. Sometimes I am lazy. Sometimes I do phone it in. You know, it, it's true. Um, do you ever get cast if you're phoning it in, or you mean once you no, have a job? No, no. When when I'm going in uh, for an audition or you know to meet or whatever, I'm always I make sure I I do what I need to do in preparation so that I don't miss anything. Because you know they give you notes sometimes. You got to really be on your toes. You have to be able to switch up and understand what they're talking about. But sometimes you're doing those gigs, man, that are just they're just a paycheck. That's what it is. It's just a paycheck. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know? <clears throat> um, you have to do what you need to do to tell that story, to get through it. And, uh, and you still, you know, don't want to suck. So even though you're phoning it in, like, you know, once you've been doing it long enough, you know what you can do. And it's easier to open up a script and read it and break it down and get it. Okay, this is what this person is trying to do. These are the intentions. This is what this person wants and this person wants. It just comes easier the more you do it. You know what I mean? Um, and there are certain things in there that, I, sh I don't want to say they become sticky, but there's certain things in there that you just know how to get to easier. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, sometimes it's the whole scene. You're like, all right, I know what this is about. I've done it before. I've done it five, ten times before. I know what this is about. I'm a, I'm a drug dealer. I'm, I'm being interrogated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so it becomes easier. I don't necessarily have to go deep, deep into who, what's his backstory, what's this and what's that and all that stuff. I've done it. You know what I mean? So there are those moments. You know, there's times I've asked the students, if you if you knew you weren't a good actor, would you still want to be an actor? And I'm kind of surprised that they don't want to answer that question. So I think it's sort of on the cusp of what you're talking about. You don't want to suck. There's something about you that, look, I want to be the best I can be. Right. Because the being the best you can be is what you've got to put out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. All, all the time. All the time. All the time. You, you, I mean, and the best, like the best of the best, that's what they, you know. That's how they feel about it. They want to get everything right all the time. You know, to the point I was, we were talking about Patrick Swayze earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, Patrick Swayze, you know, he, he had a little career, small career. <laughs> but, um, yeah, dude was somebody, I worked with him on his very, I was a regular, his very last show was called The Beast. I was on that show with him. Just, uh, and, Early in his career, like I never really respected Patrick Swayze as an actor because he seemed like, you know, he was a rough, tough guy. He did the same things to me over and over until I saw um, Two on Fool, uh, Thank You, Julie Newmar, yes, I think it's yes, called. Yes. Where he switched up and did his thing, and I was like, wow, this guy's got some skills. So when I met him, I was like, man, you know, pleasure to meet you. But dude was such a lover of the art, which I, what, what I was telling James earlier, such a lover of the craft. Like that dude would rehearse line by line by line by line and then go back and do it again and again and I'm, and I'm just watching him like wow he's a big guy that people are like he's a superstar he don't need to do any work he knows what he's and this dude was on it on it on it on it until the end of his days yeah. uh, drive and passion the amount that's needed you, do you see yourself as someone who has drive 
you, you have um, passion for the work. You said not all the time. Sometimes you want to phone it in. So yeah, no, you. So you know, it's like this. Some days I wake up and I think, if only I woke up today and wanted to do something else, <laughs> right? I'm like, I, you know, sometimes it's that hard. But I don't. Every day I wake up and I want to do it. So. I think the drive is just something that you have, like you just have to want it and you have to have it. One day you may, one day you may have that drive, and things change with people. One day you may have that drive and you're like, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it, depending on how your life is, how your career is going. There are plenty of people who have successful careers who wake up one day and they're like, I'm tired. I want to do something else. Then there are people who are struggling, struggling, struggling. They wake up and they're like, I, I'm just beating a dead horse. I can't do it anymore. I, I, I'm tired. You know, um, but uh, as long as you have, you wake up and you're like, I want to find something to do to better my craft, to better my acting, no matter what it is, no matter what it is. You know, I want to work on a new dialect. I want to read a newspaper and find out what's going on in the world. <laughs> you know, I want to read some history. Whatever it is, as long as you wake up and you're thinking that, then keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And that's me. I wake up every day and I'm like, okay, what can I do today to move myself along, to better my craft? Um, usually, it's usually when I'm doing a job, like I said, for a check. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I'm sometimes I'm like, oh, gosh, I got to go and do this and work with these cats. Uh, um, that's, that's rare for me, but... Sometimes it happens, and, and you know, but when you feel like once you felt, once you've been on stage and you felt the magic, <laughs> or you've been in front of a camera and you're working with somebody and you guys are going back and forth and you felt the, the you know, when, when the, all the stars align and you get that feeling like, it's like crack, man. It's like, you, know, you that's, that's, you're always trying to get the better crack. Right? So, now you're dating yourself. <laughs> that's what it's like. That's what, that's what that feeling is like. When you hear, when you hear the house applaud, you know, um, and they're digging what you're doing, and you're just feeling in that moment. When you're in the moment, and you're feeling in that moment, and you're bouncing it up, there's nothing like it, man. It, it, it's the best. And that's what, that's what wakes you up every day, and you're like, what corner am I going to find that crack on? <laughs> but talking about the drive and the passion, I was watching a tape yesterday, an uh, interview with uh, Craig Holtzberg, who will be here tomorrow, Okay. Uh, and he uh, is Avalon artist, and he was saying one of the mistakes he felt that young actors make is once they get that manager, they get that agent or someone, that they just sit back and think it's all going to start to happen. <laughs> he says and before they know it, that manager or that agent is letting them go because they need them to do the work, keep doing the work as an actor, get as much exposure, go out there, do theater, do as much as you can do, so that when they do call in, right. they're able to make something of it. Listen, you got to keep yourself sharp. You got to do whatever it is, whatever you got to do to keep yourself sharp, right? And let me tell you, if you don't do it, there's somebody else who is. Like, there's a room full of actors. There's a bunch of people who are the same type as you. If you're not getting up and it's like, you know, hungry, all right, I got to make myself do something. There's another cat who was up an hour before you who is doing whatever it is that you should be doing. They're doing it. There's other people out there doing it. So you gotta stay, you gotta stay sharp, and you gotta stay active, even if it's just like you know, um, you know, watching TV. So I was talking to somebody recently. She was asking me. She's like, "How do you? I don't know that I can be creative. Like, how? What do you? How do? How do? How do you be cre a creative per creative person? <clears throat> Been in the business a long time. You talk to other actors. I'm like, one thing. First, you got to experience life, right? You got to go, you know, if it's going to the museum. Art inspires art. So go see a, a play. Watch, you know, other actors. <clears throat> um, go see some artwork. 
Um, I was reading, I was uh, listening to this actor, older actor. This is, I can't, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head right now. It'll come to me. But he was saying how he was in the middle of a scene, and and he was watching his, his son had died in front of him, and he thought about that painting. In that moment, it just came to his head: the painting with the the, the ghost, like with the I don't know the other thing, like. And he put his hand on his head, and it was like a silent scream, yeah, yeah. right? I can't. And um, he was nominated for like the Academy Award or something that year, right? But he was like, it was just something that just came to his head because he saw it when he went to the museum. What was that, John? It's Monk? It's Monk. 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 Yes. I'm trying to think of who the act. The actor was um, In the Heat of the Night. Uh, Ron Steiger. Ron Steiger. 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 Love him, right? Yeah. He was telling that story, right? So, you know, you got to go out and experience life. But another thing you got to do, <clears throat> another thing you got to do is you got to steal. <coughs> Actors steal from each other. <coughs> That's what they do. <laughs> you watch TV, watch films. Oh my God, I can't believe. Wow, when she did that, that was amazing. I can't wait to do it. <laughs> right? I was talking to Wesley Snipes one time, and he, he did this movie. Um, I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but in the middle of this one scene, his wife is going at him, going at him, going at him, going at him, and he turns around, he grabs her by the head, and he walks her backwards while he's saying his lines, and then he pushes her down on the couch. And so I'm talking to him, I'm like, dude, when you grabbed her by the head, I was like, holy, where did he get that from? He was like, oh, I stole that from this Japanese movie. <laughs> <laughs> I stole that, man. I was like, okay. You know, <laughs> it's been said, steal from the best and make it your own. Mm -hmm. That's right. Make it your own. Exactly, exactly. So, there's a moment in uh, Three Sisters with Kim Stanley. I've only seen a clip of it, but she's talking about Virginia. And I love him, I love him, I love him. She's, she says the line as she's inhaling. Wow. <laughs> and, and it's, I've never seen anybody ever do that. I said, I can find a place to put it. <laughs> Um, I, was, I wanted to ask you, um, guest spots, you've done lots as I was looking at your IMDb and, and doing a, a single episode, yeah. which shoots one day or many days, I, I imagine, right. you know, as opposed to the times when you've been a regular on a series, which is a lot more work. Right. What would you say is the difference in terms of your comfort? Well, it's hard. When you're just guesting, it's, it's a little bit, um, it's harder. A little bit challenging just because you're coming into so when a crew once a, 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 a crew of actors you know the regulars once they've been together and the crew has been together they really build a family it's like a family it's like a bond everyone knows it. and you're coming into their family right and you know a family it's crazy you got different family members they got some of the crazy ones some of the cool ones and that's what you're coming into you know the best what I do when I'm coming onto a show or a new show, I'm just very chill. It's all, for me, it's all about listening. You know, I'm listening to, I'm not trying to become a member of the family because I'm only there for a short time. I'm just trying to come in and do my job, try to tell the story, right? When I'm guesting, that's what I do. And if I make a friend along the way, that's cool. But I'm not trying to join their family. Um, uh, so yeah, that's just the job. You go in, you do your little, Peace and you have fun. You, you, it's always about trying to have fun also. Um, when I'm a regular on a show, then I'm a part of that family and you really do get to know everybody and it's an amazing, just an amazing experience and feeling. Um, I just wrapped the show, it's called The Deuce. We just finished shooting it um, about three weeks ago. And, you know, it's hard when you've been working with a bunch of people and, you know, getting to know everybody and all that. Um, it's hard when you, when you separate. And you, I also work I worked on a show called The Walking Dead. And on The Walking Dead, people get killed on the show. <laughs> and when people get killed, like, you know, when you're a regular, like I was a regular on the show, when people get killed off the show, they do a big dinner. And they, get, they have, like, this, they have, like, they have a theater. And on the theater, they have posters of all the characters that were killed. It's called, <laughs> it's called the Grateful Dead Wall. <laughs> and you get your poster and your picture.
picture up on the grateful dead wall, and they have a dinner, they say goodbye, it's the saddest thing, it's just the saddest thing. <laughs> right? Because it's like, you really, it's a family member, it's like a family member gone. You know what I mean? You're not going to be seeing that person working with him anymore. Um, so being a regular on the show, is a, it's, it's a whole different experience. And not just the cast, but the crew too. You know, you get to know, you get to know everyone. So, but when you were a series regular, did you ever have somebody who was a part of that family fuck up? That was a fuck up. Well, yeah. they just <laughs> somewhere along the line, everybody, every family has one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> somebody, I mean, did you ever in the situation where someone lost their uh, job? Um. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> Hollywood is a tricky place, and it's like you know, Hollywood is a tricky place. People, people have, um, people have uh, egos. You know, certain people have egos. You, you'll find uh, for some certain producers have egos, certain actors, um, and sometimes you know you run into those people. I mean, me, per I'm, I'm, I'm a, a such a chill cat. <laughs> I don't let that, that doesn't bother me. That doesn't affect me or bother me, you know. But there's some people who don't know how to deal with, there's some people with egos who don't know how to deal with other people with egos. Mm -hmm. and they get it. I was in a play once where these two actors got into a fist fight. Like they literally got into a fight. Um, um, not during the play, but in rehearsal. And they fired this actor. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was standing, I was like sitting there because they were on stage rehearsing. And then the next thing, you know, one of them was just like, "Yo, what the?" And the other one was like, "What? You know what?" And then they went at it, and I was like, <laughs> "Right?" They went at it, and you know. The, it was resolved, blah, blah, blah. The next day we came back and one actor was gone. <laughs> and they replaced them, you know. Um, so yeah, it happens sometimes you run into people, you run into people who are just so into their own thing and what they're doing. They're not really giving, they're not really sharing. It just they just uh, so much and just just so it's all about them, and you gotta let them be that. Let them do whatever they do, and you be you. Don't try to get mixed up in it or caught up in it or whatever. Because truthfully, if they're big enough, they'll get you fired. <laughs> they will. They'll get you fired. They'll be like, I don't like his energy. I don't like the way he's. You know, he he he. You know, he he stepped on my lines too many times. They'll they'll find a reason. <laughs> they will to be like that one right there. As a matter of fact, I know this one actress. I'm, I don't want to say her name. You know who she is. She, she big time actress, the older actress, but big time actress won Tony Awards, Emmy Awards, all this stuff. And we were doing this movie together, and she was such a diva. They fired her and gave me all her lines. <laughs> <laughs> they changed. They fired her. And they gave they, they rewrote it and gave me all her stuff. <laughs> you remind me, uh, I, I remember interviewing somebody back in the 80s when we were on 21st Street, so that was a long time ago. And uh, yeah. he told me a story. He and some friends were doing background work on a film, and it was uh, Mark Wahlberg's film. Maybe it was the Basketball Diaries, or one of some mm -hmm. of that period. And he said. They got into trouble. Mark Wahlberg thought they were talking about him, which they were. Mm. <laughs> and he went over to the director and was pointing them out, and they got kicked out. They got out. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you don't want to be distracted by that. No, 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 no. It's best to just be cool. Don't try to just be cool. Just be cool. That's it. <laughs> you know, if actors approach you and they come and they want to talk and, you know, hang, then be cool. Some do, some don't. You have to be able to feel it out. Just feel the room and feel it out. And feel who's down and who's, you know. If you ever run into me, I'm cool, so come over and look us up. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm too, but um, everybody's not like that, man. Everybody's not like that. I've, yeah, everybody's not like that. Lawrence, after you finished the training, I, I don't know, I, I know at some point you got a film. Mm -hmm. It was a good breakaway for you. 
film. I don't know if you did stage when you left the, the studio or film. Film I know first. You, have, you did film first. It was but film you did first. come back and do stage work. Oh, okay. absolutely, absolutely. So <clears throat> my first thing out of school was a film. Um, was it at some Straight out of Brooklyn. Second, was straight, what is it? Straight out of Brooklyn. Straight out of Brooklyn. And I'm really dating myself. So Straight Out of Brooklyn came out in 1991. It was my first film. This was when they did open calls. I don't even know if they do open calls anymore. But I went and I stood outside and the line stretched down the street and around the corner. And this is when you could just go and stand on a line. Anybody. Stand on a line and audition. You know, they just come in and audition. It was an independent movie, non-union. I went in, I got the part. It was the lead, right? I got the part. So long story short, we made the movie. The movie went to Sundance, won the special jury prize, and that was my foot in the door, right? Mm -hmm. But after that happened, I, I didn't feel like I was a strong enough actor yet, <laughs> right? So um, I wanted to do some theater. So I started doing theater work here in the city and, you know, different things. And then I was <coughs> bouncing around. Like I was doing some theater, doing some doing some TV stuff. I went and went to LA because I got booked in a television show. So I went out there to do that show. And then that show got canceled and I was gonna stay but then the Northridge earthquake hit and I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so I came back and you know, I, I just been just been moving and shaking, man. You know, I mean, I remember Sam Tim Jackson said once, this I was very young. He was like, you know, actors are, actors are prostitutes. We'll do anything for the money. <laughs> and I remember thinking, think for yourself. Talk, you know, for yourself, Sam. <laughs> 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 I'm not. That's not me, Sam. Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> Where's the word? Where's the checks? Uh, we're like temps, man. We're, we're, we're really like temps. You know, we're working until that job is done, and then we're looking for another one until that job is done. And every job comes to an end. They all do. It doesn't matter if you're get if you if you're in a movie and you're shooting that movie for three months or six months or two months, whatever, it's gonna end. And you gotta look for another one. If you're on a TV show that shoots for a year and then it gets canceled, you gotta look for if you're on a TV show that shoots for ten years, it shoots for ten years, and then you're gonna have to look for another job. I mean eventually. It's going to end, and you're going to have to look for another gig. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel there's some jobs you get that you don't really feel like you get a chance to act? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've been pointing that out because I went to see Dumbo, uh -huh. okay, in which Danny DeVito gets a chance to really act. Mm. And it's one of his best roles. Mm. And Colin Farrell? Or Farrell. Farrell. Oh, Farrell. Farrell. No, Farrell. Farrell. Colin Farrell. The f opening scene, he gets to do some acting. But from that opening scene on, they're just short vignettes of what they have to do, and it's like there's no chance yeah. to really act or do what you enjoy doing. Well, I'll tell yeah. you, that's like in a film, that's, that's rare, because usually in a film you have more time. They give you time to, to prepare and time to really perform when you're doing a film. It's TV is the one where you feel like, did we get what we need? Because TV moves real, TV moves fast, you know? <clears throat> so you're talking about the dudes then? Yeah, like yes, do so any T yeah. it, most TV like if I if when you come in and you know you you're recurring on a show or you come in day playing on a show or when you're a regular on a show TV just moves fast, right? It's a schedule they have to right they have to so oftentimes you feel like you may not have gotten your best work in, you know, but that's why you need a director like I'm the cat that'll do it the take a hundred times I'm never satisfied right. So that's when you need a good director and the producers to say, we got it, we got it. Like, we, we're telling this story, we got it. But in TV, oftentimes you go in and you're just like, you have to learn, it's a process. You gotta learn to let it, let it go sometimes. You know, when to let it go, when to just trust. All right, they say they got it, they got the story, and that's it. <clears throat> but there are plenty of times where you're gonna feel like, not like theater, like when you're in theater, you're, you're, which I have to say, theater is the medium that I like the least to be in. Mm -hmm. Only because the process frightens me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, the, the process frightens me. First, let me say that. <clears throat> theater, you know, once you're on stage and you're doing it, boom, 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 you're locked in, you're hitting it, you're feeling good. And 
that's what it's going to be. And there's room to play, too, in that. Once you've got it locked in, there's still room to play and try different things and new things and explore, but you've got it locked in. <clears throat> um, and that feels good. You know what you're doing every night. But it frightens me because in theater, the process is you're at the theater pretty much all the time, right? You guys know. You're there all the time rehearsing which means you're going to do all your bad stuff in front of everybody, right? All your exploring, all of your, you know, learning, and what does this really mean? You're doing it in front of everybody. You're like the most vulnerable, you know, that you can be in front of everybody in the theater. And that scares me, because I'm not trying to be that open in front of everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas TV and film, you get to do all your bad stuff at home in front of the mirror. You know, you're doing it, yeah, yeah, man, I'm getting out, no, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, man. No, that's crazy. <laughs> but exactly, but when you're on stage, you're like, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, and everybody's looking at you like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and the director's like, okay, um... <laughs>
He's standing there, he's like, oh, so she's gonna break into my apartment. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> you can't do this. No, that's, that's not going to work for me. You know, it's just not going to work. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, is there a best moment so far in your career? Oh, I wanted to say also, because one of them was um, when to wear a mask and when not to wear a mask. Yes. Right? So when you want a mask, and I didn't mean just in acting. I mean, just anywhere in the scope of Maybe with a it's manager or a, you know, an agent. It's always best to right when here. you can to just try to be open and try to be honest. That's it, open and honest. The only time really to wear a mask is if <clears throat> I'd say just if you're doing a job, you're not you're not it, it, like if you go in as a, a day player or you go in as you know. Um, um, not a right, what's the word? When, you, when, you, when you're just guesting, you're just guest starring on a show, whatever, and you go in there and there's some asshole actors or some people that aren't so cool, you know, sometimes it's the producer, sometimes it's the director, whatever. Just get your paycheck. Just do the job and get out. That's it. You don't have to say nothing, but because the thing in this business is as big as it is, it's a small world. It really is a small world. You run into other directors. Most shows, they change directors every week. It's a different director. So you guest star on this show, and then you become a regular on another show, and then that director shows up, and then you're like, oh, crap. You, gotta, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> just um, in those situations, I would say put on a big mask, and it's my face. I'm having fun. I'm doing my And just get that check, you know? Yeah. And um, so the best moment so far, you would say, maybe in your career, something that stands out, and maybe the worst moment. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right, worst moment first. <laughs> I'm doing Top Dog Underdog. Just me and Harold Parano. Um, and it, it had just been on Broadway, and it was going to London, but Harold and I were doing a, a West Coast tour of it. So we did Seattle, San Francisco, and we ended at the Taper in, in, in LA. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> we're at the Taper, we're in rehearsals. No, wait, 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 wait. No, we're in Seattle. It's the first show. We're in Seattle. Seattle uh, 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 Playhouse, I think it's called. We're in Seattle, and we're in rehearsal. Now, George is going away to London. George Wolf <coughs> is directing. Mm -hmm. He directed the original one, and he directed all of them, and he's directing ours, too. George was going back and forth from London, directing the, the, the one out there and coming back. And when he was gone, <laughs> His assistant would be directing us. So anyway, he comes back, and we've got like, I don't know, maybe a week before we were supposed to open this show for the first time. I don't know if you guys know Top Dog Underdog at all. Two-man show. I play the younger brother, and at the end of the show, I kill my brother every night. I shoot him to death. I shoot him. All right, I kill him every night. And after I shoot my brother, 
there's this monologue where I'm like, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? You shouldn't have done that. You took my, my, my allowance. My mother gave me that. You know, <clears throat> that's how it goes. So us as actors, we're very cerebral. We're always trying to make sense out of everything we're saying. That's what I'm doing. I'm like, why'd you do that? You shouldn't have done that. You took my money. Uh, you shouldn't have. Mom gave me that. And George, it's the end of rehearsal. <clears throat> George jumps up out of his seat and goes, no, 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 no. And he runs over to me. He comes up to me. He goes, you're thinking too much. You're trying to make sense of it. It's not, you didn't, you shouldn't have done it. It's da, 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 da. You're going, da, la, 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 la. It's not that. It's da, da. And I'm standing there like, now, I'm a professional already at this point, right? I'm like, I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but he's like, it's this, it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that. That's it, rehearsal is over. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing there, like, really, like, I'm emotional. I'm emotional. The stage director came over and made it worse. He put his arm around my shoulder <laughs> and walked me out. <laughs> right? That was probably my worst moment, right? But I went home that day. Now, of course, you know, there's no sleeping after that. <laughs> George Wolf just fucking reamed you a new one. I'm at home and I'm thinking, I'm like, what is he talking about? I'm reading this thing. I'm looking at it over and over and over and over. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? And then it freaking snapped, man. And I'm telling you, when you get that moment where you're like, ah, that's almost just as good as the crap when you're on stage, right? <laughs> and what he was trying to say, which he didn't say, because, you know, it's better to lead an actor to it, <laughs> as you know, you know, <clears throat> rather than just tell him what to do better to leave. And he had enough time that he could just leave me to <clears throat> um, What he was saying was, in this moment, this character is not making any sense. Because this character snapped. That's why he killed his brother. Because he snapped in that moment. So he's not, he doesn't have any idea what he's saying. <laughs> he's just saying it, saying it, saying it, saying it. And then once he realized he's killed the only thing he has left, the only person, the closest person to him, and the only one he has left in life, that's when he comes back. And he realizes. So it wasn't making sense, making sense. He snapped. He's making absolutely no sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I, I found it after George Wolf freaking. <laughs> um, but that was my original right. Trying to work it through in yeah. some personal way. But sometimes the writing <coughs> is certainly there if you identify it in the writing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's there. Yeah. It was there. But, you know, we, we don't always see it. We don't always, you know, sometimes we overlook stuff. You know, there are moments where, especially in TV, you know, where you, it's three weeks later and you're like, oh, that's what that meant. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> But my best moment, I'll say my best moment, it's been, I've had a lot of really great moments where people have said, oh my God, that was amazing. Oh my gosh, you were so amazing. And that was great, that was great. Those aren't my best moments. Those are great moments and I love them. My best moments are when I take a moment when I'm standing on set and I take a moment and I look down and I think, standing on a set right now. I'm standing on a set. I'm shooting a TV show. I'm shooting a movie. And there are a bunch of people over there who either know who I am or are wondering who I am. <laughs> and I'm living that life, man. I'm living. One time I was over there on that other side looking going, who is that? And now I'm that guy. This is freaking amazing. <laughs> It's those moments when I take those moments <clears throat> and just, you know, settle into what I do. <laughs> those are always the best. Uh, Lawrence, the people who are graduating who we still perform today, um, they're going to be meeting some people, casting yeah. agent managers, and they'll probably get appointments to go in and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Is there any advice in terms of how they handle that appointment. Just the best thing to do 
it's possible to just, someone could be interested, but... Yeah. yeah, so the best thing to do is just be your best self. That's it. That's it. Just be your best self. Um, How many agents or managers have you gone through? Have you? Or do you no, I have. So, <laughs> I've had uh, my very first agency, it was like a... It was three women, three women working out of like a closet. It was really small, and they didn't get me any auditions. Like I think after a certain number of time, a certain amount of months, if you don't get an audition, you can leave. So they didn't give me any auditions in like three months or whatever, six months or whatever it was, and so I left. And I went with this other <coughs> agency. And back then, it, it was so it was so different. It was just it was so different. I I, I uh, well, I had straight out of Brooklyn, but then also like in backstage, so I was going out for a lot of open calls, and then I got this commercial, which that was the one and only commercial I ever did. I suck at commercials, so I don't really, I haven't done any, but I got that commercial, and I put it on a reel, and I sent the reel to like 10 agents, and six of them called me in, <laughs> right? And I went with the smaller one first, those three ladies, and then I left, and I went with a mid-sized one, J. Michael Bloom, it was yes, called. Yes, they don't sure. exist anymore. Yeah. Through J. Michael Bloom, I met this woman, Eunice Lee, and she was working for a guy named Bill Butler. Bill Butler, at that time, I was with him for maybe a year or so, a year and a half, because I was there right when Straight Outta Brooklyn came out, and they moved me from the kid division into the adult division. Bill Butler left and went to, went to William Morris, and he took Eunice along to be his assistant at William Morris, and she called me up and was like, we want you here. So they brought me to William Morris. I was with, at William Morris for like, five years or something like that. So that's about my third agency now I'm on, <laughs> William Mars, and I'm with Bill. Gersh called Bill Butler and was like, we're going to make you a partner and we want you to start the Gersh New York office. Bill called me up and was like, I want you to come with me to Gersh. And Eunice, who was his assistant, got moved into a full agent and she wanted me to stay with her. And so I stayed with her because I felt like she was responsible for me being at William Morris, but it just didn't work out. Yeah. And sometimes you have, like, it's about an energy. That's why I said just be your best self and be your, true, your truth and your true self, because it's really about an energy when you're working with people. Um, with her and my agent Bill together, it was like my mother and father. Like, they were a tag team, right? They knew, but when it, it was separate, she, we, me and her, we just didn't. So I stayed with her for about a year, then I left, and I went with Bill over at um, Gersh. And I was there for many, many, many years. I went to LA. <laughs> I was still in Gersh, LA, but I didn't have a, a great experience there because what I didn't realize is when you leave, just because your agency says they're bi-coastal, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that when you leave New York and leave your agent in New York, when you get to LA, that whoever they pair you up with there is going to love you as much as your agent in New York. They're not going to treat you the same because they didn't bring you in house. You know what I mean? They don't know you. They don't know your work like that. They don't. They don't care. They don't care. They they, they care about the people they brought in and they're working for. And now they're getting somebody dumped on them. And if it's not somebody whose work they respect and who they know, blah 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 blah. <clears throat> what ended up happening to me is I ended up getting passed around. Passed around. You know what I mean? I was sometimes calling me like, where's uh, so and so and so? Like, oh, he doesn't even work here anymore. <laughs> I'm like, well, who the hell am I with then? Oh, you're with so and so now. You know, and I was there for a little bit, and then I got a manager, and my manager got me a new agent um, at Innovative. My old agent, Bill, who was in New York, who, so Bill and I built such a relationship that we were actually, we became like friends. We are still friends. He left Gersh, New York and became a manager. My new manager set me up with Innovative. I was with them for eight years. And I'm still with Innovative. I was with my manager for eight years and I just left that manager and went back to Bill, who's now my manager, who was my agent back in the day. And he just said to me yesterday, I am so glad you are back in my life. <laughs> and I'm like, and so am I, man. I'm glad you're back in my life. Like you want to try to, if you can, and it's a rare, it's a rare thing, like most agent artist relationships this is a business transaction, you know? But when you find somebody that you can talk to and they get you and they understand, um, hang in there with them, hang in there with them, you know? Um, not every agent knows how to communicate well, knows when to, you know, sometimes you, you call it, sometimes you just, 
need somebody to be understanding. What we do is hard, man. And we, you know, we don't always get the gig. <laughs> you know, we get, I remember back in the day, I used to read scripts, and I would put them in the corner, put them in the corner, and when them shit started piling up, you, you know, you get the prep, you're like, oh man, that's all the work I didn't get. I need a shoulder. <laughs> and most of my family, they don't know anything about that. <laughs> So I called, you know, someone, my agent or whatever, I'm like, yeah, I went in and you want somebody who can be understanding, someone who's going to try to encourage you, who's going to push you, who's going to say, you know, don't worry about that. I believe in you. And they do. You know, the ones who bring you in, they do believe in you. And you have to trust that also. They brought you in because they believe in you. And so you got to give that 100%, man, because they don't have to. They don't have to. You got to give them 100%. When they send you out on something, give them 100%. Because they trust you. They believe in you. It's something that they saw. So when you have that meeting, when you're, you're talking about that energy, that connection mm -hmm. with them as a person to person. Mm -hmm. That yeah, you yeah. kind of excite them or you put them at ease so there's a good way to talk. <laughs> to yeah, just try to be cool. Just try to be easy and cool. Whatever they ask you, just be, you know, just be you, yourself. Just be your true self. But what if you're, you're an asshole? asshole? <laughs> <laughs> then you're in trouble. <laughs> Either you're in trouble, or if you're lucky, you'll meet an asshole agent. And you guys will be perfect together. <laughs> when you talk about the booking and jobs and the jobs you don't book, can you kind of see a ratio? Did you ever in your mind formulate a ratio? Because you're going to do, you're going to lose more jobs than you're going to get. Absolutely, there it is. I don't know what the ratio is, but... Yeah, you're going to, even if you're working a lot, like for example, let's say you work, <clears throat> you book a TV show, right? If you're, a, if you're on a TV show, that's what you're doing. You're not auditioning really for anything else you're doing. Once you're done with that TV show, <clears throat> you got to go and audition. And you may not book, like, you know, oftentimes when actors, they're on a TV show, whatever, they get locked into a certain thing and people start to see them that way. Like, this is what this person does. They just came off of this show and this is what they were doing. And they start to typecast you. And you have to find a way to reinvent yourself. While you're trying to find a way of reinventing yourself, you're going in and auditioning and this, their script's piling up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Until you convince somebody that, oh, they can do this other thing too. And it gives you the shot or whatever. You know what I mean? And there's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's all... It's, it's all just, you know, I don't know, written in the stars. It's all just, you know. There's luck involved. There's a lot of luck. A lot of luck. There's a lot of luck. I remember Whoopi Goldberg was like, you know, she's like, celebrity is a fluke. <laughs> she's like, nobody can predict when it's going to happen, who it's going to happen to. All you can do is be the best actor you can be. She's like, you know, I know that I'm a smart person. I knew I was a funny person. And I knew I was a talented person. Did I know that I was going to be, you know, a celebrity? I had no idea. I had no idea. I got lucky. Um, Steven Spielberg cast me in the, uh, um, on the color purple. And my star started to rise from there. She's like, but it's a fluke. You, you don't know. So don't bank on that. What you bank on is just being the best actor you can be and enjoying the work when you're doing it. You know, that's it. And, and anything else to take care of itself. And even though the casting directors have said, look, you, you've got to know nine out of ten times when you come in and <coughs> write for the job and you're not going to get it, but do the best job you can do. Show Always. us you're an actor. We will have you back again and again Always. and again until you... Casting directors, they want, they want to bring in, they don't want to look, they don't, they don't want to suck either. <laughs> they don't want to look bad. You know, they want to bring in the good talent. So, yeah, just always go in and do your thing. Um, <laughs> there's one actor, he's, uh, uh, Antonio Fargus is his name. I don't know if anybody in here knows Antonio Fargus or remember, he played this character called Huggy Bear on <laughs> Starsky and Hutch back in the day. And I ran into him in the airport once. And Huggy Bear was a pimp, right? I ran into him in the airport once and I was like, oh man, I'm a big fan, I love your work. Do you have any words for a young actor? You know, I'm a young, he goes, brother, just do your thing, and every thing will be every thing. <laughs> I'll pass that on to you. <laughs> I was going to ask for one last advice, but maybe.
maybe that's yeah. it. <laughs> and if you want to ask Larry maybe a question, just one question. Any questions? Um, so, I'm familiar with your work and I heard that you're a professional musician, I am as well. How has that um, impacted your career in terms of opportunities or special skills or anything like that? Um, it's really two separate things. Like, I have yet to do anything musical, really, while well, in acting. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it, it, it's two separate, two separate lives. Like, even when I post about it, I'm like, you know, if I'm doing something in music, I'm like, my music life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm doing something, I'm like, my acting life, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, I still, when, when I stopped playing music, and started acting, I'm the kind of person that just gives myself 100% to whatever it is that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I gave myself 100% to acting. Um, I remember when I, when, I, when I came into James' class, I remember James saying, look, you know what? He was like, you were taught certain things as a kid. I mean, when you were a kid, um, you were free and you know, um, you, 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 didn't, you, you, you didn't have any um, boundaries and, He's like, but now you have all these boundaries and I'm going to break them down. Now, he's talking to a kid who's been, who spent the last eight years in a practice room. Like, I'm, you're talking about boundaries. That's just four walls and you and blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking, good luck, brother. <laughs> good luck breaking down boundaries, <laughs> right? Um, but I had to trust. I had to trust and I had to give. And more, more importantly, I'm going to tell you what really motivated me, because there were times where I was going to be the one who quit. But really, what really motivated me to stay in this class was the fact that I spent my money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing I want to say. Whatever it takes, like active, some, some people say, you know, you got to be passionate, you got to want, you got to blah, blah, blah. Whatever your reason is for bringing something to the table, that's all that matters, is that you bring something to the table when you come to work, right? I stayed in the class because I spent my money, and I was like, I ain't wasting my money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad I did. Changed my life, right? And I let go, and I trusted, you know, and, and it changed my life, right? Um, um, yeah, but it, it's two separate things. But um, what was I going to say on that? Uh, uh, stayed in the class. Um, yeah, I forgot. I just went right out of my head. But, oh, whatever, whatever, bring, whatever makes you um, come to the table with something. So some people are like, you know, I got into this business because I wanted to make money, right? If that causes you to come bring something to the table, then that's what it is. Whatever your motivation is. I want to meet, you know, some beautiful women in acting. I want to meet some fine, whatever it is that brings you to the table with something, that's what matters. Nobody has to know what it is. Nobody has to know what your motivation is. You know? Because when you bring something, when you come to the table with, with something, that's all that matters. They see the passion. They see you want to be there. They see you want to do it. The reasons why don't matter. I'm sure you guys have talked about whatever your preparation is. Nobody needs to know what your preparation is. All they need to know is when you get out there is that you, you're given what needs to be given. Right? That's it. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Cats come into this business from all different walks of life, and they all have different motivations. But at the end of the day, they come to the table with something. <laughs> because it matters to them. They don't want to suck. They want to tell this story. You know what I mean? Thank yep. you very much. No pressure now. Uh, What's up? Is there a challenge too big? Meaning something like a very tough accent or a very hard impediment or something to that degree. Is there something that you just brought to your table at any given time that you're like, I don't know if I can pull this off? <clears throat> I believe in my work ethic. So I really don't. There's certain dialects that I'm like I don't know, like certain European dialects that I'm like I don't I don't know that I can I can I can do it. I mean, with enough work, I'm sure I could with enough work. Um, but sure, I saw this play, this one woman show um, last year, and I'll tell you, I'm I'm like I'm an arrogant like sometimes I can be freaking like I'm like I can do everything right. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. Like there's nothing I can do with enough work. But I saw this woman put on this show, and I was, shh, it was so good. I was like, damn, I don't think I can do that. And it came, she wrote it, 
and she performed all these different characters. And I've performed, I've done a show, it's called, I did this show called Blue Door, where I played like 20 characters, <laughs> right? I can do that, but what she did was on another level to me. And I'm just like, holy crap, I can't freaking do that, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, there's gonna be those moments, but I love, like I love watching actors do stuff that shock me, it surprised me. It's, it, you know, it motivates you. It motivates you. So yeah, there are absolutely moments where you're like, man, that might be too big, but you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. You know, I'm gonna try, and if the opportunity presents itself, I'm gonna give it 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're talking about being up against what you feel is your limitations. Somewhat. What you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> listen, you got to be honest with yourself. You know, you got to be honest with yourself. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to know what you can do and what you can't do. And knowing that, you have to determine for yourself, okay, do I want to continue on this path or not continue on this path? There are plenty of actors out there who are limited in what they can do. You watch them up there and they do, you know, they're doing the same thing. You can tell, right? But they're making a living and they're doing their thing. Some of them are celebrities, the stars. You watch them, you know exactly who they are and you know what they're going to do every time, you know. <clears throat> but they're making it. They're making it. You have to be able to be comfortable and confident with yourself. When I was at Juilliard, I saw a whole bunch of musicians there who I knew had reached a limit in their play, right? But they kept practicing and practicing, and I knew it didn't matter how much they were going to practice, they weren't getting any better. I knew that. But they didn't own that. And they stayed. They kept staying. They kept working, working, working. They stayed, <clears throat> right? Doing it. You don't want to be that person. <laughs> you want to be the person that's like, if you feel like, all right, I reached the wall, and I don't think I can push myself anymore. I don't think I have any more to give. And I don't think what I do have right now is not enough. You know, I want to be able to do more, but I can't. Maybe you should start thinking about something else. <laughs> you just have to be honest with yourself. You really do. And that's just like, and that's in everything. You just got to be honest with yourself. Yo. Did you um, like your work on the role in Gangs of New York? Did or, I like it? Or, or on the Waterboy more? Two historical roles. <laughs> I, well, thank you. Um, I enjoy both. I enjoy my roles in both. I always, um, I'm always trying to have fun in everything that I do. I'll tell you, it was, it was, Gangs of New York was harder. It was harder because um, <clears throat> it was harder because I was feeling while I was on that set like I didn't have enough to do. You know, even though the role was pivotal, you know. I just was just feeling like I was kind of in bondage there. We were in Rome for eight months, which was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but being on set and working on set and all that, it was a little bit challenging just because I, you know, as an actor, you want stuff more to do. Um, but it was still fun what I did. I have so many crazy stories. We don't even have time to tell the crazy Daniel Day Lewis stories and Leo stories and Cameron stories. <clears throat> but um that's for your book. That's for the book. <laughs> but the Water Boy was still the most fun I've ever had on the film. Such a blast, dude. I don't even know how we got that film made. <laughs> just laughed all day, bro. It was it was it was a blast. It was a blast. I had so much fun on that movie. Yeah. But I enjoy both roles. <laughs> Okay, Lawrence. That's it. We spent a lot of time. Come back down here when I get a photo, a group photo with Lawrence. Uh,